big mother. <laughs> Welcome to this house, open and affirming. In God's Son, we are all one, and in hand we stand. Welcome to this house, caring and accepting. In God's Son, we are our one. Welcome to this house of God. Welcome to this house. There is room for everyone. All will sing praises we bring. Let us all be one. Welcome to this house where God gives the call to serve. All will sing praises we bring. Welcome to this house. Okay. Thanks. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Happy Mother's Day. Yay. And on this day, we are going to recognize mothers, people who have been mothering influences in our lives. And we're also going to hold in care and compassion those people who have difficult relationships with mothering figures, with mothers, um, and those people whose lives have been touched with death, infertility, all sorts of reasons for this day to be painful. Um, as well as, so we know that today is a day that encompasses pain and joy, and that's all part of the human experience, and that's what we're here to walk together with one another. So welcome. That said, this is the last Sunday that we're going to be doing the following welcome. Um, and I have loved doing it with you. So um, here we go. Dear siblings in the risen Christ, though we reside in the not yet world where God's kingdom is still being ushered in, Gratitude still fills my spirit, for already Jesus has drawn us to himself and holds us close. Already we have the promise that in death as in life we belong to God. Already the Holy Spirit is at work in solidarity with us. So I invite you to take this moment with me to let gratitude grow and glow within you and lift it up with me to the God who lives. And each Sunday I have been concluding our welcome with, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. But I wonder if today and in the future, if you could all join me on that last part, um, the you are welcome here part, I think it will be extra welcoming. Is it okay? Can we try that? All right, so, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Oh, isn't that nice? I quite like that. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, let's see. Announcements.
Good morning. Good morning. If there are any visitors, uh, and if you wouldn't mind, you could fill out one of these welcome cards that's in the pew in front of you. Um, put it in the offering plate. We'd appreciate it if you want to. And in, through that door right there are three bathrooms. So just so you know. And I want to allay any fears that you have that I'm going to give a sermon because I, my, na my name is in the bulletin three times. <laughs> I am not going to preach. Okay. We will be celebrating graduation Sunday during our service on Sunday, June 2nd. If you have a graduate you would like celebrated and have not provided a picture, picture or pictures you would like to use, please do so no later than Wednesday, May 15th to Peggy Campbell in the office. Sophia's will be this Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Ann Pigeons. We're going to fill our hygiene bags uh, that get distributed to the Help and Hope Center. All women are invited and please RSVP to Ann if you plan to come. Bring an appetizer, salad or dessert or something else to share if you wish. We'll be packing heat next Sunday, May 19th, in Callahan Hall in the form of black pepper and curry powder. All are invited to participate. Bring your apron and your tissues. There might be some sneezing going on. Many of you attended the Chapel Kingsland concert in December. Chapel has rented our, our space again for the concert on June 2nd at 3 p.m. entitled The Magical Mystery Piano, featuring songs by the Beatles. Tickets are $25 and you can purchase them through the link in your newsletter. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Jean. This is another announcement for Five for Five, which will be uh, collected next Sunday, it is Strengthen the Church offering, and uh, that uh, supports congregations and initiatives that help us live into the United Church of Christ's Big Tent vision. The funds support leadership development, new churches, youth ministry, and renewal initiatives in existing congregations. So that'll be uh, next Sunday. Uh, Peggy will have envelopes in the pews and just uh, give whatever you can. It would be appreciated. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Is it time for the call to worship? It is uh, prelude and lighting the way. Okay. So I have to sit down. Now.
That was beautiful, Peggy. Let us rise in body or spirit and join in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Let our hearts be filled with joyful celebration for the fulfillment of God's promises. We open our hearts to receive the joy of Christ. Let us move forward with Jesus Christ as our guiding light. The light of Jesus Christ is shining in each of us. Come, let us worship our risen Christ, whose love and light guide us still. Please remain standing, if comfortable, for you to do so and join in the opening hymn, 320, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, found in the red hymnal. Joys and concerns. Desiree Galloway shared a joy saying, my grandfather, Nestor Augustus Kamika, passed away last weekend after a long journey with chronic illness. We are grateful to God to have been able to get an emergency passport for Lucas so we could attend to his burial. I was so happy to be here in Toronto reflecting on his life and lead our intimate family service. We come home today, Sunday, grateful and in peace. He is now pain-free. Thank you, Lord, for my grandfather, Nestor. Martha Sprague shared that her grandson, Rory's deployment was canceled. His group boarded their aircraft carrier on a Sunday, left port on Monday, and on Tuesday, the ship was dead in the water and had to be towed back to port. Rory is now back at his home in Arizona. 
Martha will keep us updated on future deployment and ask for continued prayers for all our military and their families, both here and abroad. Peggy and Paul Lundberg ask for prayers for their daughter Elaine as she struggles to hold her family together. Paul and Peggy Campbell ask for prayers for their brother-in-law Rick, who is in ICU undergoing biopsies, fluid draining from his lungs, PET scan and other extensive testing after passing out on his way to a doctor's appointment for severe breathing issues. Rick has MS and has been struggling for years. Bob and Holly J asked for prayers for their granddaughter Gwendolyn Brooks, who was in the hospital with a high fever and swelling aching in her joints. The doctors can't figure it out at this point. Meredith Bond shared some sadness in that her dad, John Bond, would have been celebrating his 82nd birthday this week, and she misses him so. She shared a great joy, and we all got to share in it when Annie, Ani, was here to visit from Virginia. It was wonderful to see her. Elizabeth McGee shared a joy that her niece, who is in ROTC at CSU, has been chosen to lead the cadets as the command. She is quite proud of her. Karen Graham shared that Justin graduated from CU Boulder this week with his degree in environmental product design. Proud mom moment, and we're all proud of you, Justin. Continued prayers for all our military and their families. Fiona McGee, Izzy Wick, and her classmates and the family of the student who took her life before last, the week before last as they struggled with their grief. Eileen Interline's brother Bill, Bob and Holly J, Heidi Bailey's cousin Debbie, Hannah Kloiber and the Manchester family's friends of Desiree and Jeff Galloway, Carol Taylor and the Bailey family. Are there any joys and concerns? Ellie. You need to use the microphone. Yes, no. sir. <laughs> My dear friend, Shirley Alsaker, who was a member of this congregation, turned 95 on May 8th. Oh. I talked to her on the phone. She's happy, but she misses you all and sends her love. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Shirley, happy birthday to you. Back there, Don, Cam, and, oh, you, okay. Nope, okay. Please remain seated. Let's pray. Our gracious, eternal God, we thank you for the challenges which life brings. It also brings changes, which sometimes throw us into crisis. Be with us in such times in our Christian community. Like the early disciples, 
Help us in our common life to find your guidance in our collective decisions. Help us to approach our decisions seeking your guidance through prayer. Help us to examine our hearts for any unseemly motives. Help us to focus on the common good. Help us to seek consensus and never be satisfied with power plays and divisiveness. Help us to all share in our mutual ministry. Lead us forward and help us create a community where love, acceptance, and mutuality are expressed, where joy abounds, and where results are achieved because we are all working hand in hand together. May it be said of us as it was said of old, see how those Christians love one another. We would ask God that you would save us from ever being a cloistered cell which needs escape from our world. Instead, open the windows of our souls to the world and its needs. Send us forth to herald the good news of Jesus, to be your servants to those in need, to visit the sick and the imprisoned, to remember the forgotten in our society, and to work for justice and peace. Use our varied gifts so that we may all do our fair share in this ministry. Bolster us in moments when we feel inadequate for the task. Give us courage. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Use whatever language is most worshipable for you. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from John 17, 6 through 19, from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you had given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. 
Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for, those, for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. A word of God for the people of God. Good morning, beloved community. Uh, and a special good morning, happy birthday, Shirley, and hello to everybody on Zoom. I think I forgot to greet you earlier, but good morning. <clears throat> happy Easter. Today, as we gather to celebrate the seventh and last Sunday in Easter, does anyone know why I have so adamantly wished you happy Easter each Sunday morning. It's not just because it's so much fun to say happy Easter. I'll give you a hint. Lent is 40 days long. How long do we celebrate Easter? Anybody? Who, oh, I heard the right answer in the back here. How long? 50. That's right. Lent, you'll recall, is that's the, a traditional season of fasting and preparation. We often give things up for Lent, like candy or gum. Or we'll pick up a new discipline, like praying an extra few minutes every day. And if people give up meat for Lent, that fast food restaurants still run promotions on their fish sandwiches in March and April. Here in church, Worship takes on a more somber aspect. We don't sing Alleluia during Lent. We have Lenten seasons in life, too. Times to adopt a new discipline or simplify our lives. Times to set aside creeping bad habits and embrace better practices. Times to reflect and prepare for the future. And it is right and good that our church here reflects this aspect of the human experience. That said, I have never in my life heard, oh, I wish Lent could go a bit longer this year. <laughs> or the end of Lent always comes so quickly. Nope, never heard it. Uh, I think it's okay to recognize the importance of Lent while owning that we wouldn't want to have Lent year round. You know, the way some people leave up their Christmas trees until July. Um, and the reason that I have so diligently wished you Happy Easter each week is so that it really hits home that for Lent's 40 days, 40, Easter is 50. As long as Lent is, Easter is longer. And I wanted you to really feel that this year. Today we cap off our Easter celebration with a nice confusing text from the Gospel of John, part of what is often called Jesus's high priestly prayer. It's a prayer for his disciples, not just those of his time, but also all of us, his disciples in the here and now. This passage reflect, uh, invites us to reflect on our, our identity as followers of Christ and our purpose in this world. In these verses, Jesus prays on behalf of his disciples. He acknowledges that they have kept the word and understood the truth that he has shared. But more than anything, he prays for their protection and unity that they may be one as we are one. This unity that Jesus speaks of is profound. Uh, it isn't a call for agreement or homogeneity. We don't all have to agree on anything. We don't have to live the same way. 
but we still share in a divine unity that is rooted in love and purpose and that transcends differences and binds us in a shared mission. One of the most challenging aspects of this prayer is when Jesus says his followers are not of this world, just as he is not of this world. What does this mean for us today? It doesn't mean that we should withdraw from the world, ignore its issues, or retreat into a bubble. Instead, it challenges us to engage with the world in a way that reflects our distinct values. The values of justice, peace, and radical love. Jesus prays for our sanctification, setting us apart for holy use through truth. In a post-truth era, where facts are often manipulated and falsehoods are rampant, being sanctified in truth means more than ever. It calls us to be people of integrity, whose words and actions align with the gospel we profess. In a sea of uncertainty and falsehood, we can be these points of light. We can be lighthouses of truth. Our mission, then, is not to conform to the patterns of this world, but to transform it by living out the kingdom values, or kingdom values, as I like to say, taught us by Jesus. This involves practical engagement with the world around us, feeding the hungry, advocating for the marginalized, caring for the planet, building communities that reflect God's love and justice. Today, as we honor our mothers, biological, adoptive, spiritual, and all those who have played a nurturing role in our lives, let us also embrace our identity as followers of Christ, called to make a difference in the world. We are to be bearers of light in the darkness, sources of wisdom in confusion, and agents of love in a world of indifference. As we move forward this week, let's hold tightly to this prayer of Jesus. Let's seek to be united in our diversity, grounded in truth, and courageous in our mission. May we live so distinctly in our faith that others can't help but see God through us. May we truly be in the world, but not of it, serving as beacons of hope and agents of change. Now, I invite you to reflect on how you can live out this unity and mission in your own context. What does being not of the world mean in your daily life? How can you contribute to the unity Jesus prays for? Let us commit ourselves anew to living out the profound truths of faith together. I look out and I see the faces of some of you who have committed yourselves to this community with a faithfulness that is humbling. I know that some of you have shouldered heavier burdens for far longer than perhaps you ever imagined you would, all to keep this church functional. And yet today, I am going to ask each of you to recommit yourselves to this community. Ease one another's burdens when you can. Hold fast in faith. We will grow and many hands will make light work. But even without adding a single member, we can do everything that is necessary. We can raise the money. We can make the music. We can support our youth. We can worship with our whole hearts. And we can attract the folks who need us and whom we need as well. 
We can, we can, we can. And we will. In the meantime, look around you. Like, actually look around you. <laughs> there we go. You are looking at the faces of the saints. Look down at your own hands and feet. Look, come on. You are looking at the hands and feet of Christ. Amen. Please join us for our middle hymn. It's number 293 in the red you may stand if you're able. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, see a spreading tree that grows. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant, but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion, joy and peace shall never end. Christ is risen, earth and heaven, never more shall be the same. Break the bread of new creation, where the world is still in pain. Tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get you gone. God is first and last is with us, sing Hosanna. An invitation to give. As we prepare to pass the offering plates, both real and virtual, now is the time to reach into your purse or wallet. Mother's Day. To all those out there who are mothers, those who mother others, and those who had a mother, this is the day we remember and celebrate mothers everywhere. In past years, my Mother's Day invitation has employed the imagery of moms as a stereotype. In that image, a person can envision the gifts we receive from God. Time, mothers are devoted, children, partners, inner passions, talented, they are skilled homemakers, breadwinners, caregivers, and treasure, they are generous, baked goods, egg money, love. To that we add a mix of brains, empathy, fallibility, creativity, tolerance, and forgiveness. A mother uses these gifts to create a safe place, a place to raise her children to be responsible, caring members of the human family. This year, I would like the world to start seeing UCC as a place of extravagant welcome, not a perfect place, but a place where all of God's children can feel at home and mothered. Happy Mother's Day.
Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above you, heavenly host, Creator, Son, and Holy Ghost. From all that dwell below the skies, let songs of hope and faith arise. Let peace, good will on earth be sung. Please join me for the prayer of self-dedication. It's found inside your bulletin, kind of on the bottom of that third page there, second page. This is our church. Others will feel welcomed if I am welcoming. It will do a great work if I work. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver of my time, talents, and treasure. It will be a sanctuary for social justice and peace. If I advocate for marginalized communities and practice peace in every setting of my life, therefore we shall follow in the reconciling ministry of Jesus as an inclusive justice-seeking community. And I shall dedicate myself to being all the things I want my church to be. Amen. Closing hymn. Hymn number 607. Uh, we'll all sing the first verse together. The second verse, just the women. The third verse, just the men. And then the fourth verse, everybody together again. If you're non-binary, you can pick and choose as you please. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't hear that very often. <laughs> That's great. God's love, sanctified by truth, be in the world as bearers of light, as cultivators of unity, and as doers of peace. In the name of the mothering one who loves us all, amen.